Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm not gonna be doing a crafting tutorial. I just wanted to jump on here and talk to those of you that are thinking about starting your own small business. So if you are interested in hearing how to start your own small business that is lasting, efficient, and successful, keep watching. I've been getting a lot of comments and messages across all of my social media pages from people that are wanting to start their own business. So they have a lot of questions and they just don't know where to start. So I just thought it'd be a good idea to make a video on all of the steps that you need to take in order to start and run a successful, lasting, efficient small business. So I wanna start by saying the first thing that you need to do to figure out what kind of business you're going to create you need to know what skills you already have and ask yourself what you're passionate about. If you are passionate about what you are doing, you are more likely to be successful because you have the drive to do it. If you start a business about something that you don't really know anything about, you don't have any skills pertaining to it, and it's just a quick and easy way to make money, that's not gonna last. It may work short term, but you're gonna get burnt out. You're not gonna have the motivation to keep going. And why put all the time and effort into starting your own business if you're not passionate about what you're doing? So in my case, I already had some artistic and creative skills that can bring joy to others. It's very rewarding for me, so I'm very passionate about what I do. So once you figure out what skills you have and what you're passionate about, then you need to ask yourself, okay, am I going to sell a product or a service? So once you figure out what you're gonna be offering, then you can figure out what niche or category does this fit into? And is it something that I can grow and expand on? Okay, so for example, let's say you are interested in creating jewelry. So that can kind of go with jewelry and accessories and fashion. So once you've kind of mastered your jewelry, then you can go into other things that kind of fit in that category and sell other products. So you are keeping your customers returning to you and so that you can constantly be releasing new products. So for example, if I was selling jewelry, I could make some hair bows or keychains or anything fashion related that can fit in that niche. So once you figure that out, you can then pick out the name of your business. So the first thing that I'm going to recommend is get a pen and paper, write down all of the words that go with what you are selling. So back to the jewelry example. So if I'm selling jewelry, I could write down earrings, bracelets, necklaces, beads, all the things that are related to that. So my name is Erica. So I can name my business Erica's Beaded Creations. So you get the idea, just pick out a couple different options, write them down, and then you need to go on the internet and type that name in, see if it's already taken. You don't wanna start a business with a name that is already taken because once you start trying to grow your business and you get into marketing and you dive more into SEO, which is the search engine optimization. You want your business to come up in the search results if someone were to Google handmade jewelry. So you just need to make sure that you are the only person with that name and you're not stealing someone else's name that is already licensed or copyrighted. So once you figure out your name, then you need to figure out how can I make money with this? So if it's a service, you can start your own website. If you're a good writer, you can start a blog. If you're selling a product, you can sell it on Amazon or Etsy or eBay or even Facebook. So once you figure out how you can make money on it and where you can make money on it, then you need to ask yourself, how much am I going to charge for this service or product? So a good starting point is always ask yourself, what would I pay for this product or service? Because you have to keep in mind, if you are priced so high that you wouldn't be willing to pay that, why would anyone else? The next thing you need to ask yourself is how much time and labor goes into your service or making your product? Because time is not free and your labor should not be free. Then if you're selling a product, you need to ask yourself, 
Okay, how much does it cost me to package and ship this item? How much do these supplies cost to make this item? And how much are my fees for Etsy or my website or whatever fees you need to account for to run your business? So once you add up all those numbers, then you can figure out your price point. So let's say it takes me $20 to make, package, ship this item. I feel like that's fair for my time and labor. $20 is good. You don't want to charge 20 if you're only going to break even. You wanna charge a little bit more so that you're making profit. If you're not making any profit, then why are you doing it in the first place? And if you're not making profit, you can't grow as a business. You want to constantly be reinvesting your profit into your business so that you can grow, become more successful, get better equipment, get more products, create more inventory. So it's just really important that you don't sell yourself short and charge what you think is fair, but still be able to make money and grow your business on. So once you have figured all that out, then I definitely recommend looking into the legalities of starting your own business. So any forms that you may need to fill out, let's say you are ordering things online and you wanna start your own online boutique and you need inventory to sell, you're going to need a reseller's license, you may need to get an LLC, you may need to fill out um, a fictitious name for your business name. There's a bunch of different forms and things that you may need to fill out depending on your county and your state. Some don't require you to do anything. If you make under a certain dollar amount, you just really need to look up these regulations and laws for your area. And just about everything costs money. So just keep that in mind. Just make sure you are setting some money aside to legally run your business once you are at that point. So before you get an LLC or before you apply for any of your other licensing, you may want to think about opening a bank account just for your business. Let's say you don't have the fictitious name and you don't have an LLC. So you're obviously not gonna go to a bank and get a debit or a credit card with your business's name on it. It's just gonna have your personal name on it. So if you're just starting out and you haven't done any of that, I definitely recommend looking into getting a PayPal account and debit card. It's super simple, it doesn't cost any money. So when I first started, I had a PayPal account and it just makes it really easy for your customers to pay you. You can just send them a link. They feel safe and secure sending you money because it's a secured, well-known app and you get your money instantly and you can even open up a debit card on this PayPal account. So I loved it because I hooked up my PayPal account to my website, to my Etsy, to everything that I had. And anytime I sold anything on any of my social medias, I could just send them the link and the money would go to my PayPal debit card. That debit card works just like any other debit card. I could go to Hobby Lobby or Michaels or order something off of Amazon and use that debit card and it was perfect because it was all of my business's money that was going in there and any expenses that I had, I could just use that debit card and not dip into my personal account. So I just definitely recommend separating your personal money from your business money. If you're really good at keeping it in line and you're not ready to open up a bank account yet, maybe you're just dipping your toe in the water and you're not fully invested in your small business yet, that's fine. You just have to be very organized and keep it all separate. So before I started my PayPal account, I just kept track of all the cash that I had and I had an envelope system and I would label one envelope taxes, one envelope profit, one envelope business. And that was my business supply of money that basically any money that I made went back into the business. So on that note, whether your business has its own account or whether you are keeping your money separate yourself. I definitely recommend each transaction that you receive setting aside at least 25% for your taxes. Maybe you're not legal yet and you're not gonna have to pay taxes yet, but I definitely recommend just setting that aside because you do not want to wait around on that, not save any money up for tax, and those quarter taxes come and you're unable to pay your taxes. You definitely don't wanna do that, so just keep that in the back of your head, set aside 25% of everything that you make, 
for taxes. Just set that aside, don't even think about it. So I would always set 25% aside for taxes. 25% would be my personal payment. And the other 50% went back into my business, either as reinvestment, buying newer equipment, buying more supplies to make more inventory, any fees that I had, including website fees, Etsy fees, craft fairs that I signed up for, any expenses that your business could have, that's what that percentage was for. And that's just a good way to keep track of your money and not go broke. So once you've done all that, maybe you can only afford to make the items as you are receiving the orders, or maybe you've spent a little bit of money and you've already created a bunch of products so that you have created an inventory for any orders that may come in, which is extremely smart. I definitely recommend doing that if you can afford it. But if not, that's okay. There is nothing wrong with making the orders as you get them. Maybe you're only going to be selling your products on your Instagram page or your Facebook page, or maybe you created an Etsy account. Maybe you started your own website. Maybe you decided you're not going to do an online business and you're only going to sell locally and do art shows or craft fairs or whatever. Whatever you decide, it's completely up to you. It's whatever your preference is and you're comfortable with. I used to do craft fairs and art shows before COVID, of course, but I've always had a Facebook page, an Instagram, I started a Pinterest account, a TikTok account, and I have my own Etsy shop, and I also have my own website. So it's completely your personal preference and what you can manage and what you can afford. So there's a lot of people that will tell you, pick one thing, one thing only, Stick with that once you've mastered that then you can broaden your horizon and expand on what websites you have or social media you have i personally am really good at multitasking and having a bunch of different things going on at one time i work well under pressure and stress so that just works for me but what works for me may not work for someone else so it's just what you can do don't push yourself to a breaking point because you could end up pushing yourself to your wits end and then just giving up and you don't want to do that. So just do what you can manage. And if you can do more, then add more to your plate by all means. So once you've started all of your social media accounts or websites or Etsy shop or whatever you're doing, then it's time to get the word out. So this can be the most nerve wracking thing to tell your friends and family, hey, I started a business, go check it out because deep down we are all worried about failing. We are all a little bit worried about what other people think of us. You just have to brush those thoughts aside and just remember why you started your business and just persevere. Once you start telling your friends and family, you'll be surprised at how many of them are wanting to support you and maybe they'll buy your product or pay for your service, but you cannot rely on your family and friends to keep your business afloat. That is just not fair to them. So in order to get the word out, you have to put in the work. If you don't put in the work, your business is not going to grow and become successful. So when I first started, I was constantly posting on my feed, on my stories. I was posting on every social media account that I had constantly. I was always interacting with people, liking their posts, commenting on their posts. If someone commented or messaged me, I comment and message back. You just have to constantly be engaging with your followers or subscribers so that they continue to follow you and they want to support you. If you aren't posting anything, no one's gonna know that you exist and you're not going to retain any of your followers. So just constantly be engaging with them, constantly be posting, and you need to constantly be creating new content and new products to keep your customers watching and coming back. Once you start getting more orders and more customers, then you can choose to either pay for some ads or not. It's completely up to you. I personally have paid for ads on Etsy, on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. That is a whole nother video, but it can be beneficial depending on what exactly you are advertising and how you go about it. So when I first started, most of my orders were local orders. I did have a lot that I was shipping all over, but typically I always had more local orders. And I got these local orders by putting myself out there. I went around to a handful of local stores that I shopped at. Only one of the boutiques that I talked to agreed 
to put some of my products in her store and that was so awesome. I really appreciated it. It helped me out a lot and she got some discounted inventory for her, but I would also put my name on that product so I could get recognition for it and those customers could come and find me on any of my social media pages and they could buy from me in the future. Also posted a lot on Facebook Marketplace and in Facebook groups that I was a part of. You'll be very surprised at how many people are willing to buy your product. So along with that, as I said before, I was a part of a lot of craft fairs and art shows and those were always my favorite thing to do because typically they happened within one day or a whole weekend and then I was done. The preparation for it was a lot more stressful but it was fun for me because I wasn't just shipping an item across the country and not hearing about what the customer But let's be real, not all customers will leave you a read. So it was very rewarding to be able to participate in a craft fair, see exactly who is buying my product, seeing how much they love it. And, and I also really love participating in craft fairs because I got a lot of ideas for new products. I heard what people were looking for or people would ask me if I had something and I would know to have that for next time. And I would also hear some of the negative things that people said that I can improve on. And I would just take that into consideration. I would jot a little note in my phone and remember that for next time. There's always room for improvement. You can't be bothered by it and it's going to help you grow. You want to hear what your customers have to say, whether it's good or bad. Okay guys, so I hope that I've helped you kind of understand what you need to do in order to start your own business. So if you have any questions, just drop a comment below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any other small business tips and tricks.